Hey everyone, a couple of big stories this week. First, there was yet another terrorist attack in France. I heard that the terrorists originally tried to buy some C4 explosives, but accidentally ordered a Citroen C4. Anyway, this one involved a knife and a beheading. And I have to give credit to the French police who kept the calm whilst others around them were losing their heads. President Macron, of course, was just about to start a lockdown for coronavirus anyway, so let's just see if the lockdown curfew prevents Tunisian migrants as effectively as it does coronavirus. I suspect it will be exactly as effective, by which I mean not very. Either way, the roads leading out of Paris are now so jammed that you'd assume that someone had spotted a German reconnaissance plane. Talk of analogies to the 1930s, though, this week in Britain also saw a bombshell report condemning the Labour Party of anti-Semitism. Claims that many of its party faithful ironically blame on a Zionist conspiracy to smear Jeremy Corbyn and make sure that he lost that election, as if he needed any help in that or ever risked winning in the election. These activists are, of course, the sort of people who post hammers and sickles on their Facebook page but probably don't know how to spell the word sickle. The types of people who become geography teachers largely in order to have a platform to discuss the geography of the Middle East with impressionable children. A good portion of these people probably read that Corbyn had been suspended and feared that he'd been suspended by a rope from Blackfriars Bridge like that thing with the Vatican in the early 80s. I guess you have to give some credit to Keir Starmer for accepting the ruling in full and having a go at turning the party from a far-left party to merely a centrist left party, albeit one that doesn't have any sort of policy or clue what its purpose in life is. It was a joke I heard about a man goes into a garage and explains that his car is labouring in first gear and pulling to the left. The mechanic asks, what kind of car is it? And the owner replies, a Kia Starmer. Anyway, lastly to America, where the polling day is Tuesday, and if some newspapers are talking about a civil war in the Labour Party, then as they say, they do things far bigger, though not necessarily better in America. So let's run through some of the possibilities, and all of them are pretty bad, by the way. Number one, a Biden win. This could go two ways, I guess. If he wins and takes the Senate, then be prepared for regressive tax and environmental laws at a federal level. Those laws, of course, will be declared unconstitutional, so the court will be topped up with more judges until they eventually get it passed. Honestly, if this happens, I could see a number of states just openly ignoring the law, and then, as they say, we're not in Kansas anymore, except we are in Kansas because that's one of the states, one of the all rich southern states that are key contenders for that kind of secession if it happens. Number two, a Trump win. This would result in years of screaming by the left about conspiracies involving Russia and China and asking why the dumb hicks in their Obama voting districts didn't do what they were told this time around. Hmm, I wonder why. Every celebrity, of course, will claim they're leaving the country, but none will, unless they maybe mean mo leaving the county, you know, moving from Santa Monica to Santa Barbara, possibly Santa Cruz, you know, somewhere within a few hours' drive of Los Angeles anyway. Number three, perhaps Biden will win, but he won't have the Senate. And that means gridlock. Nothing happens for four years with the Senate repeatedly voting down Biden's laws and refusing to appoint his court appointees. Eventually he retires and 2024 sees a rerun of this election, but with younger and far more extremist candidates on the ballot paper. Great fun. Or number four, the vote gets contested with accusations of fraud, probably fact-based accusations from both sides, and with some counties and key states having turnouts at over 100%, which is probably what you'd expect when both sides are secretly topping up the ballot with counts behind the scenes. This scenario will of course go all the way to the top, where Mr Trump's newly refreshed Supreme Court will almost certainly vote in favour of him. The Supreme Court is, as they say, Mr Trump's Trump card right now. And this of course is where we get to find out whether California really does want to go it alone like they keep threatening to, and whether the Silicon Valley types and their money really do want to live under a independent, high-tax Europe style utopia like they've been so keen to promote during the Trump era when it was all about as likely to happen as their companies being open and transparent with the public. Anyway, see you on the other side next week in the aftermath. If you like these, click subscribe.